holidays that there are, the one that I'm most uncomfortable with is Father's Day. And I wasn't sure why until right now. Because every Father's Day that passed, my father was never there. And it's so hard to be a son without a father. Now I'm a father with a son. And I search the word of God so he can show me how it's done. And I'm already halfway home. But the race is already won. The blood has given me victory. And he still calls me son. It's great to have this spiritual truth. But what if your example in the earth messes up the truth of heaven? What happens when there's a distance between your Abba father and your dad? And I wonder how many other people struggle with the idea that there is a heavenly father that actually loves us. Well, on this Father's Day, walk with me. And let's see if we can't figure out why it is that an eternal God decided to call us his kids, even when we didn't deserve it. Happy Father's Day. Time will go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and I will go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. The legacy of the fatherless is a need for validation. I'm 44 years old, and I still want my dad's approval. I want him to be proud of me. From my earliest memories, and y'all keep playing, stay right there. From my earliest memories, I knew mama was going to be there because my mama is always there. And for many of us, mama is always there. But dads, dads have to work. But especially in my generation, it's different than it is now. But my mom and dad divorced when I was very young, and so I did not have the luxury of relationship with my father. And I always wanted him to be proud of me. When he wasn't around, I saw him a few times. And that stayed with me, and here I am at 44 years old, and I still want my father to be proud of me. I'm looking at the red exit sign, waiting for him to come through the door so he could say, I'm proud of you, son. Look, 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 look what God has done in your life. But he's not coming. He died December 7th of 2000 in New York City on the corner of East 23rd and 1st Street. 
and I was the last person to see him alive, and I sang hymns over his bed, and he was in a coma from complications uh, of diabetes and alcoholism, neither of which will get to me. And for those who say, but don't you have diabetes? No, sir, no ma'am, I don't. It came to me, but it doesn't belong to me. Jesus died for that too. Yes, he did, he died for my sin. But Isaiah 53, four and five says, he bore our griefs and carried our iniquities. The Hebrew translation is sin, sickness, malady, or ailment. So when sickness comes to you, it doesn't belong to you. That's Jesus. That's on the cross too. That's not your cancer. That's his cancer. That's not your arthritis. That's his arthritis. Stop claiming stuff that doesn't belong to you. That's on the cross. And I need you to wake up in here and hear that that sickness doesn't belong to you. I want my dad to be proud of me. And it drives me to this day, that validation, the need uh, to be celebrated and embraced by a father, by my father. And I won't get that, which is why I'm overly affectionate with my two, hugging them, telling them how amazing they are. I say to them what I wanted said to me. And so it's very difficult Father's Day has always been hard for me. But I want to take a moment and I want to celebrate every man in here that lays it on the line every single day for his family. And I want to honor you for fighting for your family. And ladies, y'all should celebrate every man. And to all the fathers, to all the husbands, to all the grandfathers, for the legacy you have left, for the work you have done, for all the good you have done. And as we celebrate mothers and you can't find a restaurant on Mother's Day, on Father's Day, you can walk in anywhere and get a table. But that's because the devil hates men who love God. So we're gonna celebrate the men in here today. To every father, to every good father, we celebrate and salute you. For every provider, for those like me who didn't have a father in your life. I'm here to preach a message to let you know that you got a daddy who loves you very much. And for those like Pastor Tasha, who's had an amazing dad and he went on to be with the Lord, may you be comforted today to know that you are the legacy of something necessary. Because I heard from Bishop Dale Bronner that the breath of the father speaks identity to the child. And I declare that there is a word for you the video that you saw was Pastor Darius Trainer, who is our pastor over ministries. What an unbelievable expression. Let's celebrate Pastor Darius Trainer. He's not only our pastor over ministries, he's one of our teaching pastors, and he's going to be bringing the word not many days from now, and that man of God is going to bless this house, and I'm honored that you are my right hand. You are an amazing husband and father. Thank you for being my friend and for saying yes to this calling. Let's change the world and let's bless Greenville. And let's love this city. And let's fight for people who can't fight for themselves. When he was running and looking for his son, how many fathers in here would do the same if your kids were missing or lost? What would you do to go find them? How many fathers in here, if your child was lost in the woods, you're going to sit there and he'll be all right? I'd be laughing and crying. <laughs> I don't care how old my children are, they'll still be my babies. 
I'm going to embarrass my kids. My son's going to be 25. Give daddy a kiss. <laughs> Dad, I'm a grown man. I got a master's degree. Give daddy a kiss. Give me Demi Tess. <laughs> what would you do for your kids, Ryan? At what point do you stop fighting for them? What if they mess up a lot? What if you had a good kid <laughs> and one that gets on your nerves? Some of you are like, I do. <laughs> one of them you almost don't have to pray for. They, they, they do their homework. They clean their room. They do dishes. They, they from, they're from heaven. <laughs> then that's that other one. <laughs> Some of y'all got that other one. Got the house smelling like corn chips, got the shoes out, smelling like the outside. Doesn't want to listen. Dates the wrong ones. But at what point do you give up? I'm sorry, say it again. The title of my message is Relentless Pursuit. A love that will pursue you when you are not even looking for it. The love of a father on Father's Day. I want to preach from the subject, relentless pursuit. Can I preach it like I feel it? And I will go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. I will go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and I'll forever be chasing after you. Father, bless this word. May we be closer to you when the moment is over than we were when it first began. In Jesus' name. Amen. For those who are not familiar with me, my name is John Gray, and I'm the pastor here, and this is Relentless Church. I'm a husband to Pastor Aventer Gray. You changed people's lives last week when you took that microphone and put the devil on the run. I thank God for you, the anointing on your life, your perseverance. You gave people strength and gave them insight into the enemy's tactics, how the enemy wants to break up families. My mother told me that even though my father wasn't a faithful man, she stayed until the Lord told her to walk away. Had she left when she wanted to, I wouldn't be here because it's when she took him back. It's that makeup situation. <laughs> and that's how I got here. <laughs> My mother said, even though he wasn't present while they were married, I was fine. The day he left, the day it was severed, I began having nightmares. Four years old. Because the enemy actually wasn't after my dad. He was after me. The sexual abuse didn't happen until after my father was out of the picture. See, because devils don't play when a father's close by, because fathers don't play. I love God, but you mess with my kids, I promise you, you're going to see Jesus. Are there any other fathers in here that don't play when it comes to your kids? By the way, if there are any fathers in here and there's tension between you and the mother of your children and for whatever reason she doesn't want you seeing the kids, don't let that stop you. You get to your kids because they need you. Don't use the excuse that the mother is tripping. 
because it was one night when she wasn't tripping. Y'all was in there backing it up, and then that's how the kids got here. <laughs> oh, Hercules, Hercules. Get it right with your kids. If you're remarried and your new wife doesn't want you talking to your kids, that's the devil. She's insecure, and I bind that spirit. Go raise your kids. Don't let no woman stop you from getting to your kids. Don't you ever be manipulated by a Jezebel spirit in your house. You the man. Run your house. And take care of your kids. They're your legacy. Got real quiet on that right-hand side. Somebody, somebody's like, Herman, you better not clap. You better not clap. Like, but he right, he right. <laughs> What's the title of my message? If your child was in trouble, what would you do to protect them? What would you do to get them back? What would you do? What would you do? If they were sick, how long would you fight for them? Would you give up on them? funny because right now we're at a crossroads in our country about who we're going to be as a people this week. If you've been watching the news, you notice that there's been a lot of issue with immigration policy. A lot of challenges and scripture was quoted. And we're not going to be political in here. We won't dishonor authority and leadership. But I do want to say this. No father wants to be separated from his children. And I believe in order and I believe in law and all of that, but we got some issues that we need to address. And I'll simply say this, anybody who is a Christian who has challenges with immigration may want to reference scripture because in the time of Herod, he was seeking to kill children two years old and under because he heard a king was coming and he didn't know which one it was. And so an angel told Joseph, get your wife and your son and go to Egypt. And so he had to immigrate to Egypt to flee persecution and the threat of death. So be careful how you treat immigrants because your savior was one. If you don't like what I said, then you'll have to read scripture and be angry with God. No father wants to be separated from his child. But what if the child walks away? Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Jesus speaks of a young man who had made some bad decisions. And here is what is recorded. Then Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. Give me my stuff. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and turned up. That's the Negro International Version. <laughs> He wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Freeze right there. Everybody calls this story the story of the prodigal son. That's not what Jesus said. He said the son wasted his goods on prodigal living. How he lived was prodigal. His sonship was not. You are not what you do. I know that certain religious expressions want you to walk in shame 
and keep you hostage to the worst version of yourself, but I am here to let you know that the blood of Jesus has declared that you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, and so the things that I do have nothing to do with the man and the son that I am. The daughter, the son, the child of God that you are has nothing to do with the behaviors that you display. My children act bad. They disobey sometimes. Are they any less my children? When your kids do something you ask them not to do, are they no longer your children? No, you want them not to be, but they're yours. And the truth be told, many of them manifest things that came down the family line. My behavior doesn't change my DNA. My mama's still my mama, even if I don't manifest her character yet. I've got the seed of righteousness in me because I got that honest. I also got the other part from my dad. I got that honest too. There's some things in our natural bloodline that need to be overtaken by the blood of Jesus. That's why I'm glad for the transfusion that comes with the cross of Christ. Because in my flesh and in my human DNA, I have no ability to produce anything of value. But somehow, God saw enough in me that he still pursues me. And why? Well, I'd have to go back to Genesis when he said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let him have dominion. And so God decided that I'm going to make someone that looks like me, functions like me, and reminds me of me. Now, I'll make them from dust, but I'll breathe my breath. And why? Because there's always a battle between your flesh and your spirit. His breath, the ruach, the breath of God, the life of God, but then the dust, the flesh of man, that thing in us that's not regenerated, the thing in us that's wasting away. So I am flesh and I am spirit, but I'm also a child of God. How many people can be honest to say that even though you don't make every decision right, you still know that you're a child of God? You need to write this down. Identity is everything. Most people in this room and those who are watching on our online campus struggle with the idea that God loves them as they are. You don't have to change. Many people assume incorrectly that God could never pursue you because of the things you've done. Oh, religion has done a number on our minds, and we're walking into churches filled with shame and guilt and condemnation with our shoulders slumped and we're afraid because we're, wait, we're thinking God is waiting to strike us with, the, with a plague because we're sinners. And if that was the case, he could have did that before you got to church. If he was going to kill you, he could have did that a long time ago. He's been fighting to keep you alive even when you tried to kill yourself whether it was actively or subconsciously with the decisions you made, the relationships you entered, stuff you did, the cars you were in, the places where it could have taken your life. You know how many angels it has taken to keep you alive? Do you know how many times Psalm 91 was activated over your life? He will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. reason, Craig, while I'm, sitting, while I'm sitting down is because I noticed that I can become very animated when I preach. But today I wanted to have a conversation with my church because I wanted them to hear and process as children. Yesterday I had a moment. I got a chance to take my kids fishing. I've been wanting to do this for the longest time. And my father-in-law and I have gone fishing a number of times down in the country of Dothan, Alabama and North Florida, Campbellton, Florida. And uh, we caught a couple fish down there. And every time I caught one, I would take it to him because I didn't know how to take it off the hook. <laughs> Yesterday, we caught four perch. Yes, Lord. 
my wife came out there. She had jewels on her shoes. They were like, like what you call it, glitter. She had her glitter shoes on. I said the fish thought it was food. Had her feet over the edge and caught a fish. My wife caught a fish. You better go ahead. How you going to be dressed and catch fish? <laughs> I sat out there with my kids. My daughter went fishing and my son was there as well, and we were, we were creating these memories, memories that will last them, memories that I don't have. And I battled, and my kids wouldn't know it, but I was on the edge of tears the whole time because to them, this is normal. Them seeing their dad is normal. They always have a seat at the table. But one day, my son may decide in his anger and insanity, he don't want to be my son anymore. What happens when one of your kids, what if they would come up to, oh, I'm not your child. First of all, if mine said it, his whole face, <laughs> this whole area, gone. All that would be is teeth just <laughs> exposed. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I don't even know what made me say that. I'm crying, I, don't, I forgot who you were. Now, I know some of y'all live in the suburbs and y'all give y'all kids time out. In my house, we knock out. Can I get an amen on any other knockout? You know, because today kids get to talk back, apparently. That's new, because when I was coming up, you, I wish I would have fixed my mouth to question my mother. Today's kids, they, no, we need to have a discussion. No, let's talk. First of all, don't just come in my room. You need to knock. I'm sorry. I need, I'm sorry. What did you say? I need to what? You need to knock because this is my private space. This is my area. Oh, is it? What's going on in here? What you watching on TV? Give me that phone. You don't even have a phone. This is my other cell phone. This is my other bed. You don't pay rent gas and electric, car note insurance, you don't pay for groceries, all of this is mine. You need to put kids back in a kid's place. Stop trying to make them adults, they're 14. Stop talking to them like they're grown, they're not grown, you're grown. But even if one of my children decided they don't want to be mine, they can't. They don't have the ability to not be mine because they came from me. They have my DNA. They can't erase that. The Bible says when we are faithless, he is faithful for he cannot deny himself. I don't know who this is for, but God's been running after you because you look like him. You look like him. Tell somebody you look like your daddy. The Bible says that there was a young man who wanted his inheritance. You have to understand the level of disrespect it takes to go to your living father in a Middle Eastern patriarchal society and say, give me my inheritance. What he's saying is, you are as good as dead to me. Let me paint the picture because sometimes we don't understand. So he's going up to his father and like, I know you're not dead, but can you give me my inheritance like you are? And the father gave it to him. And then he goes, what does he do? He turns up. Popping bottles, spending money at the club, got his camel sitting on 24s. <laughs> Staying in the best mangers. <laughs> Let me get some extra hay. Let me get a six piece, six piece lamb with some sweet and sour sauce. Get some unleavened bread. Get a couple wine skins, turn up. But then what happened? 
because he got it wrong, it couldn't end right. And he ends up destitute when the famine hits. And now he's got to join himself to a citizen of a foreign country. Sin is a foreign country. Sin wants you to apply for citizenship. Citizenship. It promises things it cannot provide. Pleasure without consequence. Feelings and the illusion of peace without responsibility. Sin messes up your GPS. It never takes you where it says. In fact, it takes you in the opposite direction of your destiny. That's why it's critical to stay close to the Father. Don't leave his side. Don't leave his comfort. Don't leave the house. Stay connected to community. Stay connected to like-minded believers. Stay connected. That's why heart and soul on Tuesday is critical for our teenagers. We need you in the house. Stop lending our kids to this society that does not love them. Get them in the house of God. We cannot play games with the devil. But then he realized, the Bible says he came to himself. Tell somebody, wake up. He came to himself and said, wait. I was living foul. And in my living wrong, I forgot who I am. Wait a minute. My father has servants that do better than this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to repent. I'm going to go back. Oh, that's the gospel. Repent and turn. I'm going to say, Father, I've sinned against you and heaven. You know what he did right there? Personal responsibility. Every man that I know that's a good man takes personal responsibility. Men, may I encourage you and I to maintain our commitment to personal responsibility, to walk in character and integrity, and if by chance we miss it, we get up, dust ourselves off, ask the Lord for forgiveness, fight for our families, keep it moving, find accountability, find people that love you, find people that will cover you, find people that will fight for you. But men, we need each other. I'm tired of the devil picking us off one by one because the devil always attacks the isolated animal first. We need each other. We need community. We need brotherhood. Are there any men that will stand with me and say, I hear you, pastor. We got each other's back. Let's cover one another. Let's fight for one another. Let's build. He said, I'm going to go back. Now, I need you to understand, we don't know how long he was out there acting up, Elder. We don't know. But I want to reverse the story now. We know how he was living. I need you to understand the perspective of the father. Any parent here ever had a challenge with your child where there was a disconnect or an amount of time that went by where you and a child did not speak? Can I see those parents? Didn't it hurt? This seat is empty for a reason. If I'm the father of that son, even though I got an older son, probably had other kids as well, this seat's going to stay empty. I don't care how much is going on in the house. If the other kids walk in, hey, what's up, daddy? It's good to see you. <laughs> Ooh, I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. Ooh, I should. And the son is getting ready to sit here. The father said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Not that chair. Daddy, Why? Just in case your brother comes home, I want him to have a seat at the table. If they were going to shout, that was the time, but. I can imagine the son saying, you do this. You've been doing this every single day. He's not coming home. You don't know that. 
Why do you care so much anyway? Because he came from me. But he disrespected you. He didn't, he didn't honor you. You should forget about him. Spoken like a man with no kids. Because when they come from you, when they have your DNA, if you breathed into them, prayed over them, cried over them, changed their diaper, I know it's easy for the outsider to say, let them go, forget about it, stop praying. But if you had to raise them and you helped them and you sang over their crib and, and made their food and helped them when they were sick, it's something about, I got to fight for them. I don't care that they're in a moment. Save my baby a seat at the table. And I need you to know as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. God has saved you a seat at the table. One person caught it. See, you sitting in this church because Jesus left his seat at the table. The father was here. Jesus was at the right hand. There was uninterrupted fellowship between the father and the son. Daddy, I love you. Son, I love you too. I'm so proud of you. I'm just great. I honor you. Do you honor me? Yes, I'll do anything you say. I need you to step away from your throne. I need you to become a baby. I need you to go to earth. I need you to be born in a manger. I need you to take off a part of your inheritance, leave it here, put on flesh. I need you to live a sinless life. Then I'm going to need you to die. Why? So your brothers and sisters can have a seat at the table. Not my will, but your will be done. And he went down into the earth. And Mary conceived and bore a son, and his name was Yeshua Hamashiach. And he lived 33 sinless years. And in Matthew 3.16, he was baptized. And as he came out of the water, a voice from heaven came saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Wait. I like those strings. Why are you saying you're well pleased? Jesus, all he did was get baptized. He had healed no bodies, stretched out no withered hands, nobody got up out of the grave, no deaf ears or blinded eyes open, no stammering tongues loose, no devils cast out. I can imagine and understand, Father, if at, after the cross and the empty tomb, you say, that's my son, because parents always want to take credit for what their kids do. But the Father validated Jesus before he did one thing, because his performance had nothing to do with his position. He was a son before he did a miracle. He was a son before he went to the cross. He was a son before he went in that ground and got up again. He was a son when he left that throne open to make sure we had seats at the table. What would you do for your kids if you had one perfect one and a whole bunch of bad ones and the only one and the only way to redeem all the bad ones is to sacrifice the good one you telling me that there's a God that loves me that much oh yes from the sin of Adam to the cross of Christ, there was 4,000 years. He pursued you for 4,000 years from the first sin to the first drop of blood that hit the ground. And if he pursued you all of that time, add another 2,000 years all the way to now, and he's been running after you to let you know that you have a father that loves you, you have a father that adores you, you have a big brother in Jesus Christ who has died so you can live 
and yet you still struggle to worship. We got to have 50 worship leaders just for you to raise your hand. And you'll still sneak out of here early. Isn't it strange? The things we spend our time on. Stay in the movie till the last credit, but leave church early. Oh, the seat at the table. How long should God fight for us? My cousin is here. Craig Johnson is here. His twins, my baby cousins, they're more like niece and nephew. They're twins, Morgan and Croy. Craig, how long was your son in the hospital? Five months. What happened? He had a stomach flu. A stomach flu? That contracted stomach flu that contracted an infection and it went to his heart. And my little nephew needed open heart surgery. We almost lost him. He was trached for how long? Ten months. Ten months. Was there any moment, and I talked to you, and I was actually, I can say it now, you never seemed moved. It's like you knew. And I wanted to ask you, like, bro, this doesn't look good. But every time we talk, he's like, man, he, he's going to be fine. And I was like, well, I, you know, when you're a father, you're going to say that, but you really believed it. Where did you get that strength from to believe that your son, who was at death's door, but as a father, you were there and you wouldn't let it go? You stayed with that boy. You stayed in the room, in them tiny beds. Your back is still hurting. But you needed him to know that you was never going to leave him. And what he went through was not his fault. On the other side, you and I did wrong. We sinned and we failed and God still runs after us. He still pursues us. And if you were ever gonna worship, now is the time to thank him because we don't deserve the love, the grace, the forgiveness, the mercy that we have received. But he has pursued us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. A relentless pursuit running after us when we weren't even looking for him. And on this Father's Day, we need to give our heavenly Father by whom we cry out with a spirit of adoption, Abba Father, Daddy God. We need to lift up a praise for his love, his eternal pursuit. Someone give Jesus a praise for sacrificing because the Father asked him to. I'm almost done. Just stay with me and you can remain standing. But You know, I bet the older son got upset with the father for always leaving a seat at the table because it reminded everybody else that the family's not complete. While they're eating, there was still a plate there, a place setting. And that's the way we need to be as a church. Just because you got yours, stop acting like it's okay. Somebody else needs to get to that table. Everybody needs to get saved. We need to fight for every soul, not just the cool kids, not just the cute ones, not just the wealthy ones, but the ones that are hurting, strung out, broken, needles in their arm, meth, whatever, it doesn't matter. We need to run after them and fight for them because our Heavenly Father loves everybody the same. Except the free gift of salvation is on them, but we need to let them know they have a seat at the table. You know, Pastor Brandon, if somehow I was disconnected from my son or my daughter, haven't I hope you would understand, even in today's society, you don't leave doors unlocked. In this Old Testament culture, there was a certain time after a certain time, Mallory, you just, you lock the door, you turn the lights off, it's over, nobody comes in, nobody's getting out. But I bet that father, 
kept a lantern lit, had it in the window. And the son was like, Daddy, why do you keep leaving the door unlocked? Just in case your brother comes home and doesn't have his key. I wanted to be able to come on in. Some people have lost their keys. They've lost their way. But this afternoon, I came to tell you, you can come on home. The Bible says he came to himself. He was dirty, smelling like the life he had been living. And as he was staggering home, defeated, the father It can't be. Son, is that you? Son, is that you? He didn't have pride like church folk today who walk in looking at people who don't know the songs and don't have all the scripture and looking at them like they're less than. No, he said, that's my boy. He got some dirt on him, but that one belongs to me. And the Bible says he ran, not the son. The father pursued the son. He grabbed him and he fell on his neck. He said, hey, get the robe, get the ring, get his sandals, kill the calf. My son that was dead, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. I've been waiting on this moment. My son is home, hey, hey Bob, my son is home. Hey, Jimmy, he came home. What kind of love does a father have to have? to have a robe, a ring, and sandals ready, just in case. What if his foot size had changed? He had a number of sandals, just in case he had grown out of the ones that he had when he left. I don't know who you are, but no matter how long you've been gone, he's got a pair of shoes that fit. He's got a robe that fits. He's got a ring. The ring says, I'm family. We're covenant connected. The robe says, I'm, I got authority. And the sandals say, I got a new path. I got a firm foundation. Then he killed the fatted calf. Poor calf. That calf has been living good. He watched all the other ones go to slaughter. Y'all take care. I'm in a special pen. <laughs> they be... They be brushing my fur, not knowing that he was the just in case. Just in case the sun showed up. See, because while one comes in, one has to be slain. Today, we're going to be celebrating as people join the church and give their lives to Jesus. But somebody had to die for you to be able to come up here. The father was on his throne, and Jesus said these words, young man, Eloi, Eloi, laba sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that moment, heaven turned its back on Jesus so he wouldn't have to turn his back on you. There's a seat at the table for all the sons and daughters. There's a seat at the table. And I don't know who this is for, but if you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never rededicated your life to Jesus or you need to rededicate. If you need to give your life to Jesus for the first time or you want to be a member of Relentless Church, get here now. I'm not going to beg you. Move, move, move. Because there's a love that will pursue you. If you don't have to leave, don't leave. We'll leave together in just a moment. Come on. And while they're coming, let's celebrate.
my brother. Welcome home. Y'all can do better than this. People are coming. Relentless love. There are more. They're coming. They're coming. More are coming. If you don't have to leave, don't. Look at that. They're still coming. Who else? Keep coming. Keep coming. I need y'all to worship. People are getting saved in here. Me and Pastor Aventer are standing here waiting. There's a couple more that need to come. I believe if y'all applaud and celebrate them, they'll have the courage. Black, white, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Native American, doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, young, seasoned, get here. God is waiting. I believe there are about five more people. If you are not sure, of where you would go if you were to leave this earth in 10 minutes, get to this altar. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. I see you. I see him coming. Hey! Father, in this atmosphere, thank you for the souls that have been added to the kingdom today. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless, build these souls. Thank you for adding to your kingdom today. Pastor Aventer and I and the rest of the Relentless Church family covenant to walk with these souls. Thank you. Whole families have come. Curses have been broken. Daddy, we take our seat at the table. Is there anybody grateful that they have a seat at the table? The Father's love pursued you to remind you of who you are. May you never live beneath your privilege another day in your life. Everybody at this altar, repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation found only in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm made new. I'm coming home. I forget my past and look to the future. I got my robe. I got my ring, I got my sandals, killed a fatted calf. Today we celebrate, I am made new. I have my seat at the table, in Jesus' name. You are my Lord and my Savior. Amen, amen, and amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got saved. Welcome to the family. I said welcome to the family. I said, welcome to the family. Can we celebrate our brothers and sisters?
limitless, y'all. Can we celebrate? This is what God did in one service. Somebody give God a great prize. Have you been blessed today? Here's my prayer on Father's Day. Fathers, you deserve whatever honor you're about to receive. I hope they give you free stuff at the restaurant. Eat whatever you want. You are free from all cholesterol, diabetes, sugar, high blood pressure for 24 hours. Eat every piece of fried chicken you can find. Catfish, short ribs, dessert, Mountain Dew, root beer. Keep the root on there. Babe, you want to say something to greet the people? I'm sorry. I've just been kind of messed up for the whole service. Um, in a great way, um, the video, the video still has me... Um, just thanking God for never giving up on me. And the way Pastor Darius and his son, I just, this whole service has been very meaningful and impactful. And I just thank God for how he loves us beyond us and just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. And if you feel like you haven't been a perfect one, it doesn't matter. You can start again today. God's arms are open to receive you just like your child will be. It's probably waiting for you to pursue them. So let's just keep this pursuit. This word just keeps raining. Pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. And there's no better time like the other to share that that is the name of our new Wednesday night services. First Wednesday services when they begin again is called Pursuit Nights. You guys have an amazing, amazing Father's Day and we love you with the love of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have you been blessed? Don't forget your joy today. Laugh today. Throw a water balloon today. Enjoy your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord our God be gracious to you. Show you his favor. Give you his peace. God bless you. Hug three people on your way out the door. Tell them we are relentless. Happy Father's Day. Love to all of our relentless church online family. We love y'all.